Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. In SAS, right? What it does, it goes to this URL, it specifies the user, password, and you know, get the content of it. We could have different targets for SAS. If you see this target, SAS, what it does, it goes to the specific URL, provides the username, password, and it, it does start. And you know, for the stop also, you could create a target target. So anything, it, it could be achieved, like, uh, functionality it could be achieved as a target in and build.xml file, but the primary or the necessary ta targets that we need to have is for the clean, for the build or compile, and for the deployment. Those targets are the mandatory treatment. Okay, any questions? You have what is the difference like here, like deploy and deploy what? Deploy actually copies the folder. When we say deploy, Valraj, folks, everyone, it actually copies the folder. When we are saying deploy var, what it does, it's bundling that, it's zipping that into a single file, which is sync app.var file, right? And right. When we start the server, right, the dot .war file extracts and a folder with the same name gets created. You understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. Here, the deploy target, well, there is nothing that we're doing. We're just doing a copy. The deploy target, what are we doing? We are just doing a copy from the web directory which is nothing but the web content folder. We're copying all files from the web content folder. What is the two directory here? It's the deploy path. Deploy path has to be your server deployment directory. For Tomcat, it is web app. And we're giving the name in which folder it has to copy all those things. That's what the deploy does. What does the deploy war does? It's bundling all the contents of this web content folder into a dot .war file, and it is copying it into the web app folder. Right? So actually here, it is actually doing the creation, and we are <coughs> copying the war files that are created into the deploy path. Deploy path is the web app folder of some Okay. Oops. Understand the difference between deploy and deploy war? So when we copy the dot war file, when we copy the war file, what happens? When we start the server, it gets extracted, right? So copying the war file and starting the server and all those things we have seen when we are learning Spring. They have you it's the same Spring MVC project which I have shared with you folks. I just deleted the Tomcat task. See, you know, the Tomcat uh, installation is not there in MVC. 
the reply tasks are also dependent on that. So for running and you know playing around this using this build file, you already have this build file. It's the same Spring MVC project which I have shared with you. Uh, you just need to specify the proper properties here. That's all. Where the tongue that exactly install the URL, the username, password, or the JDBC. I mean, JDBC is not needed. Like now we are not doing it. But if you want to execute a special target, you need that information as well. It's the same thing we have used. It's the same build script that we have used. But we haven't discussed this build script when we're discussing Spring. So, Neha, do we need to install any specific uh, tool uh, for the end? I mean, actually, uh, the, I mean, Eclipse actually comes with the plugin and and Maven this thing. But if at all you want to do it from the command prompt, we have to download and. And when we are using Maven, we have to, uh, you know, download Maven as well. But usually, we have the plugin that comes right away with Eclipse, that comes with Eclipse. And if you have already run the Spring and all those things, you you could have, you have seen yourself that you you are able to run it without any installation because Eclipse itself has an inbuilt plugin for it. So it will uh, automatically install. We know we don't need to. Yes, it it, it internally has the ARM plugin because when I'm doing it, it is it is executing it right. I don't I, I didn't install ARM physically in my box. Okay. Okay, everyone of you have you tried running and deploying this thing MVC project? Okay, everyone of you and you know, you, you just try doing this. If you're not able to say, you know, something that not is organized or something, folks, please let me know. I think I should be able to help you. If you already tried it, like you know, it, it works because the latest version is a couple of versions. When you go to Eclipse and download the Eclipse for Java EE developers, it has the plugin for both and and Maven. It's in build plugin for both and and Maven. Folks, we don't really you know notice it, but um, when we see the Eclipse folder, right? It has some folder called you know plugins. And it has, you know, many uh, inbuilt plugins. We usually don't, you know, uh, have an eye on it, but th these plugins include uh, and and even as well. Okay, any questions in the sand build script? So in this case, like the deploy war, we can uh, deploy on any server from like server. It, it don't care window any Linux. Any server. Or any Unix. server. What we need to do is provide the path correctly here. The deploy path, we have mm -hmm. to provide correctly here. If you want to put it in a web logic, you have the path of it, right? The deploy path, it could be different for different servers and it could be different for different machines. I might have, yeah, the Tomcat installation in C Tomcat, right? So you can mm -hmm. have it in C program files Tomcat, right? What we exactly need to specify is the properties correctly. Right? See, that is the reason we have the properties defined and we use it. So that if I share this code to you, okay? If I share this product to you, you just need to modify this property and everything else works for you, right? Right. And if at all, if you want to like migrate from down there to web logic, we just specify the path and we don't need to tweak it, you know, tweak it more, right? The migration is a different, you know, it's, it's a level higher and there will be different things that we consider when we're doing a server migration. But in general, folks, it's not like I'm sharing it with you. What happens usually is there are different environments for development, QA, right? The boxes or paths that could be different for dependent. So we don't want to go and read the build XML files on specific boxes, on dev box or you know QA or the production or staging. What we change or you know or what we keep specific to the box is the build.property file and this build script 
is the same across an environment. That that is the way how we have to maintain it. That's the reason even when I share the product with you, you will be able to I mean make it up and running just by changing this build dot property file and nothing else. Oops, any any other questions before we jump on to Maven? Okay. Uh, yes, basically, no, no. Uh, while deploying, we're not deploying it from our machine. It's always from somewhere from software to know some repository or servers. So basically, mm -hmm. if my code is on, like <clears throat> for deployment, uh, if I'm doing a deployment, what I'll do, I'll just check out from software and then bundle it up and just put it on server. So yes. how can we use software how can we pull the code from subversion and and See, usually we have to specify a, a different commands for doing the checkout, right? And okay. after the checkout, where do you have it? I think in the Linux we have like the CO command to do the checkout and all that, right? So we do the checkout in a specific folder, and depending on that, we specify the proper build directory on where the script should look up for the Java files. And where it should bundle it and everything. Okay. And usually we don't like, you know, we usually configure through some tools like Jenkins or Hudson, right? So, which actually has like the provision to specify the repository. I mean, do all the configurations basically. If you are talking it from the perspective of the continuous integration, we use like tools like Hudson or Jenkins. I mean, they are one and the same. People say it's like, you know, the developers who have built Harrison just copied it to Jenkins. So we use those kind of tools when we are doing continuous integration. It, it's not just achieved with the AND script. We have like, I mean, sophisticated tools to achieve that. Okay. You know, oh, did I answer your question or? You know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I know one task like exec execute uh, task. I thought like uh, that's how we can do it uh, to pull it from subversion. I don't know about Jenkins. Okay, you. Or, oh, you're 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 asking for something. Like I'm not asking. I'm I'm not talking yeah, about. Yeah, here uh, itself in the build script, you want to do a checkout, right? Yeah, so that's. Yeah, but uh, the SVN we have the SVN itself. We have an SVN tag itself to do that. We set okay. with username, password, we check out like, you know, uh, something, let me just, you know, you, you have like, if it's such a different task, it can be pretty cool. Yeah. I have used it. I'm not sure where it's showing up. We have the SVM and how it goes is um, inside this SVM we have to specify the username, the username for you to log in, and the password. And I think inside it we have to check out to do a check out. And this checkout takes an URL from where we want to actually do the checkout. And it has a destination path. I don't remember it. Does. It's a complete destination path or GEST path. We actually specify it. It's something like this. Okay. Okay. I mean, for the exact thing that uh, you could just Google it, but this is what I remember that you all You have the SVN itself to do with, uh, with that. It has some tasks to do that. Okay. But it is like for legacy projects, we have built like, you know, long back in years, they actually, 
do that, Manoj. So yes, there is a, I mean, way from and you could do a checkout. But usually, when we are using for, I mean, uh, we use like some kind of tools like Axon or Jenkins. I mean, actually, those are used for continuous integration. Meaning, we specify the repository. Okay, do a checkout from here. And after the checkout, execute this specific step. And you know, we could have like the right on or configure like that. So usually you don't, I mean, there will be separate build engineers to write and configure those things. Folks, any questions? I'm gonna just do some Googling. I mean, I think it's something similar to this. Yeah, that, that's fine, yeah. I mean, how, uh... Yeah, so the exact thing that. And folks, the other prominently used build tool is Maven. Can you can you explain one more time what's the difference between deploy and deploy war? Okay, deploy actually copies the web content as a folder. The contents of the web content folder it copies into the web app folder of Tomcat with Spring app name. That's all. But the deploy was the contents of the web content folder, it bundles into a war file and it copies that war file to the web app folder. You understand it? Look, everyone up are you clear with the deploy and deploy war? Tell so me how uh, sorry, go ahead. I'm I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So do uh, Niha do the deploy or call the deploy internally? No. No. It's it's, it's doing a copy. The, in deploy, what we don't need to do the we we don't we don't want to copy the folder, right? When one target calls internally is depending on the attribute depends. When you have depends, that specific target is internally called. Deploy word doesn't call deploy. If I say your deploy, right? Then uh -huh. it does. Okay. And here you mentioned source 1.5 and the target 1.5. That's the JDK 1.5 or what that means, like 1.5 means? The source version. It's the the JRE version that we are using, 1.5 or 1.6, it's, it's, it's just the JDK. What what do you want to use for the compilation actually? Let's say if I'm using if I'm using 1.4 and if I'm using generic, the 1.4 does not recognize generic, right? So when I'm using generic, I should at least specify 1.5 or higher, right? That is the source version I'm using. So saying you know this is in the code is written in this specific version. What about okay. this debug? Actually, I mean, in, during the compilation, we could actually specify some breakpoints to check it out. Okay, so if you are putting this true, that means it will go on that breakpoint while yes, yes. running it's, it's the wait and do all that. And fail on error is equal to true and like if, if there is an error, you want to stop it or you still want to proceed with it. And we can run the test cases also. Can we run test cases on? Uh... Test cases with and is very difficult. It's, I don't say it's very difficult because it's the one which has been used. So we have to write target triggering the, you know, the specific suit and we have to write targets like targets to actually do that. What kind of Java target? Because it's like no, no, Java, this is Java no, this is a, in a target you could you know you could have an execute task to execute something, right? Okay, okay. No, I'm so asking you, like uh, we have uh, Java C here, it's something like Java to run a class or something like that. No, we actually use the execute command to execute the suit. That's how we usually do. We create okay. a test suit and we execute it using the execute command. We, we just put it. 
no um could you ask a question okay so what i was trying to ask like uh, like if i want to run a java program what i will do i will just compile it first and uh, like from a command prompt i'll put a java yeah. thing compile it and then put a java and run the whatever file i want to run is that the same here we can do yes 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 it's the same way that we do here actually Okay, it's kind it is, of. We're doing the same thing, but we're doing it through script. That's all. It's kind right? of uh, similar, like shell scripting. I think that yes. is uh, somewhat but difficult. I mean, any script, it just. I mean, you, you could achieve anything with the script. We just call them as build scripts because using the scripts, we actually do the building, deploy, and all this. That's why we call them as build scripts. See, when you want to achieve something, if you are manually doing it or achieving this step, you should be doing the same step, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So even when you are like executing this step, as I said, you have one target to build, you have one target to run it, and you have a target which just triggers it. Right? Same is what we do. We have the, as you mentioned, we use the Java thing to compile and Java to run. Right? So same is what does. So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com. On our website h2kinfosys.com, you will also find more detailed information on who we are, the courses that we offer, what each course covers. Also, if you're interested in a demo program, please register on our homepage on the left-hand side. Just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class. The demo class is absolutely free. Experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost. Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information. If you still have more questions, please feel free to call us. Call us at 770-777-1269. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at 020-337-1269. 17615 You can also email us at training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.